Hello and welcome to Jay Wallatalo Wood Burning and Art. Today I'm going to show you how to wood burn a little vintage coffee sign. So starting out, I sketch out the drawing with pencil on wood and just using regular number two pencil. Um, here I'm making straight lines using a ruler. The ruler is actually one that we made, um, but just a straight edge and, and adding some straight lines. I've already sketched out most of the drawing um, in pencil and we do everything freehand. Um, I get ideas. This came from an idea online, but you have to be very careful about plagiarism and copyright laws. So um, I never trace anything. I try to find free reference photos online. You can use the Google filter for creative common use to find images that are not copyright. And then on top of that, I also always try to do things freehand, add a little bit of my own style to it. So it's not an exact replica of what I'm working with. Um, a lot of our artwork is wildlife artwork and things that we get images ourselves. My husband goes out and takes a lot of reference photos. This particular wood burning, I did get the idea from with an online picture, but having sketched it out the night before in pencil and then coming back through and adding some of my own ideas to it, um, changing it up a little bit. So then when I do the actual wood burning, I'm no longer looking at the reference picture. I'm doing this out of my head just based on the sketch so that it's modified and changed quite a bit from the original picture that I got the idea from. I tend to sketch things out in pencil first. You don't have to. Um, there's other ways. A lot of people transfer an image onto the wood um, using transfer paper, carbon paper, and they actually copy an image. That you'll need to have specific sizes for your boards, print out the image on paper to the size of your board, and then have the transfer paper or the carbon paper. And there's also issues with trying to erase the lines from the carbon paper that people run into. I am blessed with the fact that we don't even have that available close by, and I don't order things online very often, so I tend to do things all freehand. Now that I have my sketch, I can start wood burning. I tend to sketch things out mainly because I like to have the composition down before I start wood burning. When I'm wood burning, it's very hard to do anything like erasing. That takes time and a sander, and it changes the surface of the wood a little bit. So basically, when I'm wood burning, whatever I do is permanent. I can add to it and make it darker, but it's really hard to take anything away. So once something is wood burned onto the surface of the wood, it's there in my mind. And that can be interesting if you make a mistake, but I just say it's art. There are no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents that you can work into the artwork. I have the shading tip. Um, the, I'm using a Colwood pyrography machine and using the shading tip. Right now I'm just going through and doing blocks of black and white like a checkerboard. So holding the shading tip flat down I'm touching the wood very, very lightly, not pressing down hardly at all, just moving it very slow to get a very dark burn. The slower you move the tip, the darker it will burn. I usually keep the heat setting between 4 and 5, 
when I'm doing large areas like this, sometimes I'll turn it up to six, but on a scale of one to ten, one being the least amount of heat and ten being the hottest, I usually work between four and five, sometimes up to six. And I just go through, when I'm on an edge, I tip the wood burner at a slight angle so that I'm using the very edge of the wire tip to get a straight line or a, a, a hard edge along it. And then I flatten it back out and pull it across to create the, the dark area. And when you burn hot, this is um, closer to the 6 on the heat, on the temperature setting. When you're burning hot like this, you will get a little bit of smoke produced, but you shouldn't get much. If that little bit of smoke does bother you, you can work next to a window you have cracked open. You can have a small fan turned on to help disperse and blow that little bit of smoke out the window. Um... But most of the time, especially with the more detailed work, if you're not burning large areas black, um, you won't get hardly any smoke produced at all. You'll also notice that I'm leaving a little bit, this is the bottom right-hand corner of the piece of wood, I'm not filling in these two squares completely. By not filling in those two squares completely, I leave a little bit blank right along the edge, and that allows me to come back and sign my name at the end of it. Trick there. So keep in mind you always want to sign your work. Even if you're not terribly proud of it, you always want to sign your work when you're done. That leaves a record, because you never know, you might get gorgeously famous a hundred years from now, even if you only do two things in your entire life. So you want to take credit for what you do. All right, so I'm going to speed up this video a little bit here in a second, um, because all I'm doing is filling in black squares right here. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and I don't want you to get too bored with watching this forever, so we're going to take a little break and speed up this video. So, as you can tell, my audio is a little bit off from the video because I sped up the video prior to saying so, but that's okay, I'm learning. Uh, I'm not a tech person. I would much rather be considered kind of a quasi-artist. But here again, we're just filling in the black right now. Just very, very lightly holding the wood burner on the wood, moving very, very slow. And I'm trying something um, a little bit different with this one. This is where... I'm going to go through and burn the late wood first. Um, the late wood is the darker wood, and it's denser. Um, so it doesn't burn quite as well as the early wood. It takes a little bit longer to burn. I'm also not trying to get a consistent burn. I want this to turn out to look more like an oil painting and have almost like brush marks, brush strokes, um, from the wood burner. So I want a little bit of texture in the shading here. But just for me, I want to go through and burn all of the late wood, the wood that takes longer to burn dark, first because I get bored and I get impatient. So if I do the hard part first, the part that takes longer and takes more patience, then 
the rest of it turns out like, oh, this is so easy and fun because when I'm getting closer to the end, it doesn't take as long to burn the early wood, the lighter colored wood. This is a southern pine species on the surface of the uh, plywood that I'm using. And I didn't do any extra sanding on this plywood. This is basically a uh, scrap plywood from a neighbor that donated it to us. And I just took it and ran with it. And I'm having fun. So, again, you'll see I'm doing a very hard edge right here. Uh using just the very tip of the wood burner, not holding the wood burner flat, just doing a very fine line to get the sol the hard edge along the cup, and then I put the tip down flat on the wood to fill in a larger area. But going through and doing kind of a little bit of detailed work, not really too much, um, and just filling in the black areas, trying to get the overall gist of the image first. But you'll notice I'm following the, the late wood, the darker wood here, and filling in all the black on it because that takes the most time. And if I do the hard part up front, then when it comes to the easy part, the early wood that burns fast, then I don't get as bored and it goes along quicker and it's more enjoyable for me. So again, just speeding up the video a little bit. Um, I don't want you to get bored. And all I'm doing is filling in the black. I'm filling in the black on the late wood first, and I'm purposely leaving it textured to look almost like a painting. I'm going around the pencil marks where I want to leave uh, light, swirly decorations, um, and I'm just using the shading tip throughout all of this. Now, when I'm working, I will do the hard edge with the tip of the wood burner, with the very edge of the tip, and then pull the shading back toward me. But I have to adjust the angle that I'm burning at because the angle of the wood burner where it is toward me, um, it leaves a softer edge than at the very tip of the wood burner. And so in order to get a hard edge at different angles, I either have to move the entire board or I have to move change the angle at which I'm holding the wood burner on the wood. And I preferably change the whole angle of the wood. As you can see here, I'm rotating the wood around so that when I do want a hard edge, I'm always working with the hard edge furthest away from me and pulling the shading back toward me. And I'm still just working through on um, mainly doing the late wood first and then going back and filling in the early wood. I'm back to my squares now, so I'm just filling in little squares, making kind of a border around the wood burning. We don't have a lot of woodworking tools, so actually making a frame for the artwork is something that we're not set up to do very much. Therefore, usually if I want something to appear like it's framed, I try to build the frame into the picture itself and do the frame in wood burning. But that's just mainly because we don't have the tools and the skill set to build our own frames. Always work with what you have. Never let anything limit you. All right. So if you don't have the tools for making your own frames, draw the frame in wood burning. Frame it in with the artwork itself. 
that's my philosophy. Never, ever let anything limit you. Work with what you've got and you'll do just fine. So I've got all of the late wood burnt in. Now I'm going into the early wood. This take does not take nearly as much time. It goes much faster. And again, I'm purposely leaving it kind of textured. I'm not trying to get a very solid black burn because I want it to look almost like an oil painting. And now it's coming together to the point where you can actually tell what the picture's supposed to be like. That's always a fun part where it kind of comes together and you get the gist of it. This particular wood burning, I did kind of the opposite of most of my wood burnings. There's your overall idea. Um, most of the time I start with the very most detailed part of the picture and then work my way into the less detailed part. This one I kind of did the opposite. The most detailed part here is going to be the cup itself. But because it's an overall image and not just focused on the cup, the cup is fairly small compared to the size of the entire wood burning. So I decided to try to work backwards from my normal style and fill in all of the background first before I start in on the detail of the cup. So now we have the overall layout of the wood burning and the background filled in. That was pretty straightforward. It does take a lot of time and patience, but there's a cup of coffee for you. And now I'm going to switch to the uh, C tip for the wood burner, and it's for like doing curvy lines, and go back and fill in some detail on the cup. And this is just a fun little wood burning. This is actually fairly good size. It's about 15 inches by 16 inches. Um, and it there's not anything terribly complicated about it. It just takes some time to fill in the black. But so far, I haven't really done any shading. I've just filled in black. I've left a little bit of a line in between the checkerboard at the bottom and the black background behind the cup. I've left a little line blank. Now I'm going to go through with the curvy tip and just add a tiny line to separate the cup from the white checkerboard. And help outline the cup a little bit. This just helps clean up the edges from the shading tip a little bit. Um, I'm not going to worry about it with the swirly designs in the background, but where I have a s strict edge between objects, like the cup, I like to have a solid line in between them. And adding the design on the cup, which is then accented by the design in the background. Here also I'm outlining the shine. There's like a light shine on the cup or a reflection. And I outlined that just a little bit. Um, you don't have to. These are all just ideas to keep in mind. It adds a little bit more sense of realism to the artwork, whereas most of this picture in particular is fairly abstract, but adding a little bit of a reflection on the surface of the cup helps add just a hint of realism. and draw some happy little leaves on a vine. Uh, 
Another wonderful thing about doing things freehand like this, where I drew it in pencil first, is if I decide that I don't want a leaf, or if I want an extra leaf, or if I don't want to follow the line that I had drawn earlier, the pencil sketch that I started with erases just fine with a normal eraser. Um, whereas if you use the carbon paper or transfer paper, it can be harder, more difficult to get rid of lines that you don't completely cover with the wood burner. That also plays in when you're doing lighter shading. I find that if I do light shading, um, the pencil marks don't erase nearly as well underneath where I've burnt it. Even if it's just a light shading for the burn, if I'm shading over pencil lines, I tend to try to erase them first before I do my shading, because after I've burnt the surface, the pencil marks don't erase nearly as well. So we're just going through and adding just a little bit of detail. Um, here I'm working up in the vapor part, um, the little lines of steam that are coming out. I'm outlining to dis make them a little bit more distinct from the uh, background pattern. And just very, very lightly going through and adding a little bit of detail, making those edges just a little bit crisper from the shading tip. Differentiating it from the background design. There's nothing hard about this. Just have fun with it. You can see how the middle vapor line, the steam in from the middle, is on top of the steam coming off on the right hand side. So I added the line to outline the vapor in the middle and make that distinguishable between the one on the right hand side so that they overlap. And then I'm just going to add a little line in here, um, just to add a little bit of flair to it, I guess. It just looks kind of plain as it is. So I think I'll go back through and add just a little stroke in here, just to accent these, add just a little bit more detail. That way there's not quite as big of a block of white there. Kind of ties it together with the detail in the vines on the cup. And then go through and add little dots. Oh, there was a flash. I've got the wood burner up, set a little bit higher than it probably should right now for the amount that I'm touching the wood. Um, it's actually the tip of the wood burner is not in contact with the surface of the wood, so the heat isn't transferring as much as if I were doing the continuous lines. So when I made the dots, um, the tip got quite a bit hotter since it wasn't in constant contact transferring the heat over to the wood. And that's something to keep in mind is that you can turn that wood burner down a little bit more if you're not constantly in contact. Um, and one of the final touches, well not quite done yet, but pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and sign the work. Um, we put Jay Walatalo, that covers both me and my husband, James, um, with the copyright symbol, the year, and then we also number the artwork uh, for how many we've done this year. So while I had the curvy tip or the writing tip 
on, I went ahead and signed it. Then I switched back over to the shading tip. I want to add just a little bit of shading to the cup, just lightly, very, very lightly, not pressing down at all, and moving the tip quite quickly so that it doesn't get a very dark burn. I'm adding just a touch of shading to the cup. And this gives it just a little bit more realism, um, just around the edges, a little bit at the bottom of the cup, and going around where I put the reflection. Um, and that just gives it a little bit more of a 3D appearance to have some shading on the edge. I control that um, primarily by how fast I'm moving the wood burner. This is in real speed right now, and so I'm actually moving that tip quite quickly across the surface, just barely touching the surface, getting a very, very easy light burn to add some shading. Add a little bit to indicate the rim of the cup, and there we go. That should be about it. I think I still need to go back through and erase my pencil marks. But overall, I think we have a coffee cup. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.